Good evening, and welcome to Grace Lutheran Church and School. It is very nice to have all of you here with us tonight, uh, particularly Lucy, who we will be baptizing this evening. Uh, I'll allow, I'll tell you what's going on as we get to that part of the service, and of course, as always, as, a, as is our custom here at Grace, uh, we'll follow along and join in with her baptism. Uh, everything that you're going to need for tonight's service is going to be on the screen, except for the baptism that will be in the hymnal. Uh, I do have a couple of very brief announcements to make for us, particularly for those who are visiting with us online. Uh, a welcome to you as well, too. We hope and we pray uh, that your homes were kept safe from the storm. Uh, but at this point, we are aware that over 40 uh, of our families between our church and day school are out of their homes, uh, and any number of other houses have been uh, damaged or impacted by the storm. So we are, of course, keeping everybody in our prayers. Uh, my announcements mainly surround that. We are going to have a team uh, from our LCMS uh, crisis group called Alert. They will be coming into town tomorrow evening. Uh, they are going to start uh, re restoration work around our area on Monday. And yes, we're aware that another storm is on its way. Uh, so we'll have to monitor that situation. They are looking for volunteers and, of course, are aware that that might be difficult at the beginning of their process uh, as people are busy securing their own homes. So do keep that in mind. Uh, look for some more information about what you might do to help out. Uh, they'll be here at least two and a half weeks. That might increase a little bit, uh, depending upon what happens with the storm this upcoming week. Also, we are going to be hosting our circuit convocation tomorrow afternoon. That will be from 2 to 5 here at Grace. We have a very special guest, a good friend of mine, a, a former uh, SEM friend and also now a SEM professor, the Reverend Dr. Todd Peppercorn, who will be here. He's going to be preaching for us tonight, uh, but then he'll be our keynote speaker also at the convocation tomorrow afternoon. So that's from 2 to 5 here at Grace. All of our circuit churches are taking place. Uh, we have a special convocation choir that Mrs. Tippett has assembled. We're really looking forward to that event as well, too. Look for upcoming announcements that will come your way via constant contact. And that will catch you up to date on everything else that's taking place at Grace. As a tip-off, uh, you'll know whether we're in session for school and open for our offices based on what Pinellas County schools decide to do. We follow uh, them. It's possible we may, we may need to close when they don't, but generally we follow them. All right, that's everything I needed to say. At this time, I'll invite all of us to stand as we call upon our God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father, most merciful God. We confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Unless the Lord builds the house, those who build it labor in vain. Behold, 
children are a heritage from the Lord, the fruit of the womb of a reward. Blessed is the man who fills his quiver with them. He shall not be put to shame when he speaks with his enemies in the gate. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Unless the Lord builds the house, those who build it labor in vain. Congregation, you may be seated. We'll turn to page 268 in that maroon-colored hymnal in front of you in the pew. And at times, I'll invite you to join with us in our responses. Dearly beloved, Christ our Lord says in the last chapter of Matthew, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And in the last chapter of Mark, our Lord promises, whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. And the Apostle Peter has written, baptism now saves you. The Word of God also teaches that we are all conceived and born sinful, and are under the power of the devil until Christ claims us as his own. We would be lost forever unless delivered from sin, death, and everlasting condemnation. But the Father of all mercy and grace has sent his Son, Jesus Christ, who atoned for the sin of the whole world, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. How are you named? Lucy Joe, receive the sign of the Holy Cross upon your forehead and upon your heart. Mark you as one redeemed by Christ the crucified. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, according to your strict judgment, you condemned the unbelieving world through the flood. Yet according to your great mercy, you presented believing Noah and his family eight souls in all. You drowned hard-hearted Pharaoh and all his hosts in the Red Sea. 
yet led your people Israel through the water on dry ground, foreshadowing this washing of your holy baptism. Through the baptism in the Jordan of your beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, you sanctified and instituted all waters to be a blessed flood and a lavish washing away of sin. We pray that you would behold Lucy Joe according to your boundless mercy and bless her with true faith by the Holy Spirit that through this saving flood all sin in her which has been inherited from Adam and which she herself has committed sin would be drowned and die. Grant that she be kept safe and secure in the holy ark of the Christian church, being separated from the multitude of unbelievers and serving your name at all times with a fervent spirit and a joyful hope, so that with all believers in your promise, she would be declared worthy of eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And from ancient times, the church has observed the custom of appointing sponsors for baptismal candidates and catechumens. And the Evangelical Lutheran Church sponsors are to confess the faith expressed in the Apostles' Creed and taught in the small catechism. They are, whenever possible, to witness the baptism of those they sponsor. They are to pray for them, support them in their ongoing instruction and nurture in the Christian faith, and encourage them toward the faithful reception of the Lord's Supper. They are, at all times, to be examples to them of the holy life of faith in Christ and love for neighbor. Is it your intention to serve Lucy Joe as sponsors in the Christian faith? If so, say yes with the help of God. God enable you both to will and to do this faithful and loving work and with his grace fulfill what we are unable to do. Here, the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. They brought young children to Jesus that he might touch them, but the disciples rebuked those who brought them. But when Jesus saw it, he was greatly displeased and said to them, Let the little children come to me and do not forbid them, for of such is the kingdom of God. Assuredly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will by no means enter it. And he took them up in his arms, put his hands on them, and blessed them. This is the word of the Lord. And we'll join together in praying the prayer our Savior has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And the Lord preserve your coming in and your going out from this time forth and even forevermore. And since Lucy Jo cannot answer for herself, we'll together with parents and sponsors speak the answers to these questions on her behalf. Lucy Jo, do you renounce the devil? Do you renounce all his works? Do you renounce all his ways? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried? He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and of the life everlasting. Lucy Joe, do you desire to be baptized? Lucy Joe, I baptize you in the name of the Father, 
and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Amen. Receive this burning light to show that you have received Christ, who is the light of the world. Live always in the light of Christ and be ever watchful uh, for his coming that you may meet him with joy and enter with him into the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Amen. In holy baptism, God the Father has made you a member of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and an heir with us of all the treasures of heaven in the one holy Christian and apostolic church. We receive you in Jesus' name as our sister in Christ that together we might hear his word, receive his gifts, and proclaim the praises of him who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Congregation, please stand for prayer. And we'll take a moment of silence. Let us pray. Almighty and most merciful God and Father, we thank and praise you that you graciously preserve and enlarge your family and have granted Lucy Jo the new birth and holy baptism and made her a member of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and an heir of your heavenly kingdom. We humbly implore you that as she has now become your child, you would keep her in her baptismal grace, that according to your good pleasure, she may faithfully grow to lead a godly life to the praise and honor of your holy name. And finally, with all your saints, obtain the promised inheritance in heaven. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. And as Lucy Jo and her family return to their seats, it's fitting that we would welcome her into God's kingdom. And you'll remain standing for prayer. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Merciful Father, your patience and loving kindness toward us have no end. Grant that by your Holy Spirit we may always think and do those things that are pleasing in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. You may be seated. The epistle reading comes out of the book of Hebrews, the second chapter. Therefore, we must pay much closer attention to what we have heard lest we drift away from it. For since the message declared by angels proved to be reliable and very transgression or disobedience received a just tribu tribulation, how shall we escape if we neglect such a great salvation? It was declared at first by the Lord, and it was attested to us by those who heard, while God also bore witness by signs and wonders and various miracles and by gifts of the Holy Spirit distributed according to his will. Now it was not to angels that God subjected the world to come, of which we are speaking. It has been testified somewhere, what is a man, that you are mindful of him, or the son of man, that you care for him. You made him for a little while lower than the angels. You have crowned him with the glory and honor, putting everything in subjection, subjection under his feet. Now, in putting everything in subjection to him, he left nothing outside his control. At present, we do not yet see everything in subjection to him. 
But we see him who for a little while was made lower than the angels, namely Jesus, crowned with the glory and honor because of the suffering of death, so that by the grace of God, he might taste the death for everyone. For it was fitting that he from whom and by whom all things exist and bringing many sons to glory should make the founder of their salvation perfect through suffering. For he who sanctifies and those who are sanctified all have one origin. That is why he is not ashamed to call them brothers, saying, I will tell you of your name to my brothers. In the midst of the congregation, I will sing your praise. And again, I will put my trust in him. And again, behold, I and the children of God has given me. This is the word of the Lord. Pharisees came up in order to test Jesus, asked, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? He answered them, What did Moses command you? They said, Moses allowed a man to write a certificate of divorce and to send her away. And Jesus said to them, Because of your hardness of heart, he wrote you this commandment. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let not man separate. And in the house, the disciples asked him again about this matter. And he said to them, whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. And they were bringing children to him that he might touch them. And the disciples rebuked them. But when Jesus saw it, he was indignant and said to them, Let the children come to me. Do not hinder them, for to such belongs the kingdom of God. Truly I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a child shall not enter it. And he took them in his arms and blessed them, laying his hands on them. This is the gospel of the Lord.
in the name of Jesus, amen. Can you imagine the scene that we have just heard? We actually heard it twice because we heard it in the baptism as well. People bringing young children to Jesus that he might touch them. And the text says that the disciples rebuked them. What is wrong with these people? You have to wonder, why is it that they are so offended by people just wanting to bring their children to Jesus? And they clearly are. Jesus then says something remarkable. He says that if you are to enter the kingdom of heaven, you are going to enter it like this little child. Now that is not actually how things tend to work in the world. If you were to look at how things work in the world, to whom would the kingdom of heaven belong? The rich? The holy, the ones who have their act together, the ones that seem perfect, the ones that have got everything figured out, well, maybe, but that's definitely not how God works. The way God works is that he takes a little child a child that is helpless, a child in complete need, a child unable to contribute anything. Really, I suppose looking cute is something. <clears throat> but still, a child that brings nothing to the table. They don't work. They can't help the household. They are for all intents and purposes, a burden. And yet, to such belongs the kingdom of God. This teaches us something about who God is and how God works. God, you see, does his best work with nothing, with the ordinary the unremarkable, the unexpected. He created the word. He created the world with the word of his voice. He redeemed the world by the death of his son. God takes things that are ordinary and hopelessly, hopelessly normal and turns it on its head and says, aha, there I am at work. I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. That is God at work in this place. Now, you would have to be pretty um, dense to not recognize that we kind of are on one side of a hurricane and another side of an almost hurricane. For this Midwesterner, that's a kind of an unusual experience. We don't get a lot of hurricanes in Indiana. <clears throat> We're in between. And in between these things, and we don't exactly know what's going to happen. We don't know how the Lord will be at work in this place. We don't know who will need our love and care. But in between these things, we have this glorious, wonderful interruption we call church, where we gather together around God's word sing his praises, hear his word, and watch as Lucy Joe, which is an awesome name, by the way, 
as Lucy Jo is brought into the kingdom of God. For of such is the kingdom of God. Can you see how that is remarkable? Can you recognize the amazingness of what God does in this place? No matter how the storms rage, no matter how much the troubles are of this world that assaults us, no matter what may come, God comes here and says, you belong, you have a place, you are home. And as we heard earlier in the text, what God joins together, let no one put asunder. For when God binds himself to you in holy baptism, he deems it. It is for life. When God delivers himself to you in the holy supper, which we are about to receive, he means it. This is my body. This is my blood. What looks immovable around us, the hurricanes that rage, are like paper before him. And what seems as fragile as a little baby, as a flower, endures. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of the Lord endures forever. This night, as we rejoice in God's gift given to Lucy Joe and given to you and to me, we remember who we are as his children, that he has called us by name. Trust the word of his voice. Trust that when he says this, he means it for you. Trust that he will see you through whatever the storms are which may come. In Jesus' holy name, amen. amen. And now the peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in true faith to life everlasting. Amen. of the church in our prayers this evening we remember all of those who are listed on our prayer page let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs Loving Father, your Son took the little children into his arms and blessed them. Help your saints to welcome little ones with joy, that nothing may hinder their entrance into the kingdom of God and the arms of Christ, Lord, in your mercy. Gracious Lord, you give us men to guide your church on earth. We ask your blessing for Matthew, our synod president, James, our district president, Pat, our circuit visitor, and all pastors, together with the many servants and treasurers of your church, particularly those who serve us here at Grace Lutheran Church and School. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, be near all couples struggling in their marriages, those families that are torn apart by divorce, and households where people are single and lonely. Allow all in need to find their strength in you, trusting that you will be their sufficiency in their days of trial and also in their days of joy. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, grant your wisdom to Joseph, our president, to all public servants, and to those who, who work to bring peace, justice, health, and protection in this and every place that they may be strengthened and upheld in every good deed. As we continue to, in the lead up to our upcoming election, we pray that you would be with the electorate given the responsibility to choose our leaders, particularly those who live in the states of Florida 
uh, North Carolina, Tennessee, and Georgia. Be with those serving in the armed forces of our land as well as those of our allies. Watch over the peoples of this world who live in war-torn places so that they might find peace in your arms, Lord, in your mercy. Gracious God, you promise to abide with your people and uphold them in their suffering. In this Mental Health Awareness Month, be with those who suffer from a wide variety of anxieties, depression, or other maladies. Comfort all who are suffering from losses due to Hurricane Helene, those who have requested our prayers on our prayer page, those who labor and toil to keep the peace in our land and to provide relief at the time of natural disaster, that, that they would be upheld and kept safe. Strengthen their faith in the midst of their trials and grant them strength, help, help, and healing according to your good and gracious will, Lord, in your mercy. Holy Lord, your Son gives us his very body and blood to eat and drink in the supper. Grant us your grace that we may approach your table with repentant hearts and a firm resolution to amend our sinful lives by the help of your Holy Spirit. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, help us by your spirit to fear you and walk in your ways in Christ, that we may eat the fruit of the labor of your hands and receive your blessing in all that we do. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. At this time, you do see a slide that's talking to you about an offering. Uh, I would remind also, I've had a lot of questions about hurricane relief. Uh, you can go on to our synodical website, lcms.org, uh, or also the Florida Georgia District website, uh, if you wish to give to, towards hurricane relief there. Uh, also, if you're more interested in giving to relief that will benefit our families here at Grace, uh, who've been impacted, uh, you could make a check out, designate on it hurricane relief, and make it designated also towards the pastor's special fund. Well, bid adieu and the Lord's blessing to those who have been watching us online. Please stand. The Lord be with you.